Give me another nugget. Well, I mean, ju just before we go off the being a master of one, um, you know, I mean, you yourself, you're known as the presentation guy. Mm. And, and, and you and I were talking only earlier this evening about yeah. how business has gone up yeah. as a direct consequence of that focus. Yeah. Um, it, it seems counterintuitive that yeah. as a, there's an independent business operator having one discipline that you're really going to focus on is going to bring you in more work. Yeah. It, it, it seems more natural that if you've got seven disciplines, you've got seven times more chance of getting work. But the opposite is the case. People are looking for people that can deliver above and beyond. Um, and they know that if you've got 27 arrows under your sling, um, you might be able to deliver them close to the mark, but you're not going to be hitting mm. too many bullseyes. We're going we're to ask you for, for some of your feedback on there because I think that's an interesting point. Dennis is saying be the authority. I'm saying, well, you know, grab work where you can, if, especially if things and times are tough. So I'll get your, your thoughts on that. Um, but your second piece of nugget? Uh, being the authority, number one, um, have the resources behind you to support your business. You know, the yeah. reality is, as a startup, if you can't, if you can't support yourself with zero income for at least six to nine months, you shouldn't be starting up. You really have got to have the resources behind you not to have to worry about, if I don't get a job this week, I, I'm eating out of the gutter. Um, because that is going to impact on your ability to be able to A, land work, yeah. and B, be in the right place mentally to be able to deliver effectively. It's interesting you say that because I guess we know of someone that has, um, that has had one client and has been probably a generalist with that one client, but as you and I know, and as probably a lot of people here know too, you're, you're only as good as your last gig. Mm. And those happy sheets that people are ticking away and you get a 10, a 10, a 10, a 10. And this lady had just one day, had a bad day, didn't she? She had a bad day and she got an eight, 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 seven, and a three and, a, and don't ever come back. So of the 16 years that she's been working, one day's bad, she has now lost the lot because mm. she has one client. So are you saying that she should have had enough resources because she's now probably going to start up again mm. in a different manner. You think that she should be able to ride the way for six to nine months? Yep, definitely. But uh, look, also it's, it's dangerous to rely on just one client. Yeah. You know? The, there, there are innumerable, ca innumerable cases, and I'm sure everybody's got stories around people that have specialised in government or mining. Or, and, and when times are good in those industries, they, mm. oh, they do really, yeah, really yeah, well. Yeah. But the moment that industry catches a cold, um, they're in trouble. Mm. Um, so as, as a startup, I, I, I would be looking to widen my client por portfolio. Um, so I may have contacts, and most of us as startups have got contacts in an industry that we've come from. And I mean, in my case, um, it was tourism and hospitality because that's where I'd spent the previous 15 years um, in the corporate world. Um, but I very quickly started to broaden that yeah. because you know, tourism and hospitality is a very cyclical business. Uh, when it's good, it's great. When it's not so good, it's terrible. Mm. Um, so you've got to be able to broaden um, your your client list, um, you've got to be able to get into, into different industries. And again, that's, that's all about control. It, yeah. It's very easy as a startup to get a job here and a job there. And you, you find that the work starts to drive you yeah. rather than you driving the work. Yeah. You've always got to have that, um, you know, certainly an eye on the road, but you've also got to have an eye on what's up ahead um, to make sure that you don't find yourself driving down a dead end. And before yeah. you get to the end of that dead end, yeah. Um, you realise that you're in a cul-de-sac. I guess, I guess it's just fitting that the uh, the next session that we're doing on the 23rd of September is about, uh, you know, what do we do when things go pear-shaped? And you know, I'd love to have you on the couch, but you're going to be in Germany somewhere drinking, you know, Deutsches or something, I don't know. But I guess for, for me, you're saying, if I can then ride the wave of zero dollars for the next six to nine months, what should I be doing in that time? Just drinking lots of coffee with clients. <laughs> Oh, seriously? Just yeah, getting your name out there and, and, and establishing your credibility. Um, you know, in, in my case, for example, in terms of broadening my market, um, I, I did a, a lot of, um, I guess in legal terms, you call it pro bono work. 
Yeah. Um, so I, I would do a 20 minute presentation at a Chamber of Commerce breakfast. Um, yeah. You know, I, I would do a, a local networking association um, where I give them a 15 minute presentation of some sort. And it, it's about getting your name in, into the industries that you want to get mm. into. Um, and being known for the one thing. One thing. Okay, let's, let me for. put this to you then. then. Then an opportunity arises where somebody says, um, hey, Dennis, I'd like to get you on board. You know you haven't been working for six months. You're scratching at the post to get, uh, to get some work. Let's just say your fees uh, is $1,000. And somebody says, um, but my budget's $600. Now, you haven't been doing anything for six months. Are yep. you going to take it? Um, that would depend. And I know it sounds like I'm sidestepping the question, but it would depend on where I would see um, the potential for that client. If, mm. if this is a one-off job, um, I would be very, very reluctant to take a $600 job. Because if, if you're promoting yourself in, in the community as being worth this amount, yeah. and you discount that without good reason, um, then you're really saying, well, look, I'm asking for this, but I'm really only worth that. But that's what the market determines. You might say that you're worth two and a half thousand dollars. The market says, "Well, I'm only going to pay you eight hundred dollars. Take it or leave it." Well, then you're you're aiming yourself at the wrong part of the market. Yeah. You know, if, if 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 you believe that you're worth two and a half grand, fifteen hundred, whatever the whatever yeah. the figure might be, five grand, ten grand. Yeah. Um. You know, there, there you and I both know that there are facilitators out there that'll work for five hundred dollars a day. There are facilitators that won't work for less than three. I heard somebody say the other day, I won't get out of bed for eight. Right. Like, who is he? Miranda Kerr? Like, seriously, I mean, is that an attitude thing? Is that, sorry, Miranda, but is that an attitude thing? Is that, is that an arrogance thing that the, what's been offered to you as a startup is, and, and I know you're saying this is counterintuitive, that you're wanting me to ride the wave for six months. I've got no work. I've got to be the authority in one. I've now got work. I'm not diminishing. I need to put some scratchings on the table to feed my family. Yep. And you're saying you're devaluing yourself and you will get more work from that. You, you run the risk of devaluing yourself. Yeah. And you also, it, it's, yeah. I mean, the analogy here is the oriental rug, isn't it? Yeah. Is it possible to buy an oriental rug at full retail? Because every time yeah. it's advertised, it's advertised at 80% off. Yeah. So you, you do that, you know, for two, three, four, five, or six months, and, and, and your value in the market is 80% off. Um, yeah, you, you, you can't afford to cheapen yourself that way. So if somebody's budget's 600 bucks and, and, and my rate's 1,000, um, I either have to find, A, a reason to discount. So I, if I can turn around to that client and say, look, um, I don't work for less than $1,000. Um, however, recognizing your budget limitations, mm -hmm. if you can get me two other introductions, I'll do the gig for 600. But only if those two introductions are warm. I don't want you just going through an A to Z and give me two names. I want you to give me introductions to people you know have got an issue that I can help with. And if you can do that, then I'm happy to discount on the basis that you're giving me some future work. But you've, you've got to have some some reasoning behind it you know don't just accept it because well i'm not doing anything anyway because before you know it that's the rate that you're trapped at because that's what i want to ask you also is that would you get up in the morning for six hundred dollars and say no i'd rather work for nothing because i'm valued at a thousand dollars so i might ask them what uh, what your thoughts are for that yeah because uh because my theory is is that i either get up this morning and i work for nothing and i think about no scratchings on the on the you know on the dinner table or I have 600 bucks in my hand. Mm. Do I think I'm devaluing myself? I'm probably thinking that I'm probably surviving, maybe in that, in that case. I, 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 look, e economic reality is economic reality. Yeah. But you've got to be careful that you're not setting a trap for yourself. Yeah. And that two years from now, you're not looking back saying, how can I get my rate up from 600? Yeah. You know, because the mistake was made early on. And it's usually made because you've not got enough resource behind you. Yeah. So you're struggling because you've not got six or nine months capital reserve. Mm. Um, so you've got to take anything that comes along. And, and in taking anything that comes along, you know, you get a reputation out there at being valued a certain amount. And once that stamp is there, it is really tough to change it. Mm. And, and we're, we're all guilty of the same thing. Mm. You know, you see, you see anything, whether it's a service or a, or a product in itself, 
um, that's marketed at a particular level, um, and then you see it heavily discounted, the first thing you ask yourself is, what's wrong? Why so cheap? Yeah? You, you never see Jaguar, Mercedes, or BMW, or Audi have sales. They might have an event every now and then, but they don't have sales because they don't want to cheapen the brand. They might value add, but yeah. they don't bring those prices down. So if okay. their budget's 600 bucks, I'd say, well, okay, um, if you can give me four gigs instead of two, yeah. then I'll do the $600 thing. Okay. But you, you, you're not playing with what your value is.